If I recall, you went through the University of Chicago in a year and a half. No, in eight months. Eight months. Oh yeah. My. Yeah. But that's, they had a special program then. I was already older than most of the students. I'd been through Hoffman's. I was, I think, 21, 22 years old. And you could take comprehensive exams. And if you passed any comprehensive exam, you didn't have to take that course. So um, I've always been good, certainly in languages. You know, I speak five languages. And uh, uh, I ha I've, have, I've got a good mathematical head. And, I study history, and by through being with Hoffman in the school, I studied philosophy, and I had to read some awfully difficult texts, you know, in order to do that, like Kant, you know, who can read Kant? You know, you read two lines and you get a headache. Did you uh, immediately go back to New York? After um, the, I graduated from Chicago, I went to work in the logging industry because I found out that Unskilled, unskilled <coughs> labor uh, had two places where it made the most money per hour. One was in road work in Alaska, and the other was in the northwest in the logging industry. You could make a dollar sixty-five an hour, which in those days was 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 uh, a fortune. Yeah. So um, I hitchhiked you were a across. Twenty-two-year-old lumberjack. Yeah, I hitchhiked across the country from Chicago to Oregon. And I got a job um, in, in, in a logging operation. Uh, while I was in, on that job, I got a letter from the University of Chicago Art Department. They say, it gives us great pleasure to offer you a tenure track position as, as an uh, art professor at the university. And I said, uh, I said, um, um, to Emily, to my wife, she says, you want to go back to, to, to California? She said, no way, you know. And I, I also, I'd been quite depressed in San Francisco, living there while, while being at the university as a visiting artist, because the lifestyle in California and the idea that you're supposed to, you know, suffer and lead a troubled, troubled life, which I'd gotten from Hoffman, you know, I did, they didn't coincide, so I wrote back to, to Chicago, and uh, to uh, uh, Berkeley. Yeah, I said, um, he says, only perversity prevents me from accepting your kind offer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned Emily. Let's talk, let's talk about Emily a little bit and about your, your wife, the artist Emily Mason. Uh, when did you and her first meet? I met her at the um, Abstract Artists Club, um, it was called the Artists Club actually, in New York in 1956, when I just come back from Mexico. And you were married in? I was married in 57, yeah. yeah. After a suitable interval of living in sin. <laughs> <laughs> so you all have been together 53, 53 years. Yes. Yes, and uh, the medal, though, um, for this accomplishment, I think is, is more deserving for my wife than it is of me because I'm rather difficult to live with at times, and she's not. Has Wolf's work influenced your work at all? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, he's... He's an important link in the uh, chain of our history, and I think um, uh, he, there's not a, uh, an artist working in color that hasn't been inspired by Wolf, for sure. I, I work in color, and uh, everybody I know uh, looks to his work you know, quite seriously. Many of the pictures that we looked at when we walked through the gallery were done on your extended honeymoon, were they not? Yes, well, we went to, to, to Venice because she had a Fulbright to, to attend. Uh, she, she graduated from Cooper Union, and she got this Fulbright scholarship to attend the Accademia di Belle Arti in Venice. Mm -hmm. And I f figured, you know, I'm not going to let those Italians take her away from me because I'm going to chase after her. And I, but I had to stay behind because I had to get ready for an exhibition, my first uptown exhibition, you know, in a, commercial gallery, because I'd been only in a cooperative gallery before. 
fortunately, uh, and these were all paintings I made of Emily while we were in Provincetown. And everybody liked them. And now that I see them again, I like them myself, you know. There's a lot of stuff that I made earlier that made me so nervous at the time, you know, that now looks like perfectly reasonable art. I wish I'd enjoyed myself more. I was just spending all my time worrying. You know? But like Mark Twain says, he spent all his life worrying about things that never happened. Built most of us. Yeah. And you all settled in New York? After that, after yeah. That. By that time, you know, we had small children. And I got a job as a teacher, a part-time teacher at Cooper Union. and. Um, my next show that I had of the paintings I did in Italy didn't sell at all well. And where was that? At that was at Grace Borgen. Was that your first show with Grace? The second show at Grace. Second. The first show sold out. Second show, nothing. So fortunately, by that time, though, um, you know, uh, I had enough collectors and people who, who knew my name. When you're sort of half famous, there's enough people around who have uh, who have an interest in keeping your fame alive, or at least to keeping you alive, you know. So I got a Guggenheim Fellowship, which tied me over a, a couple of years in which I didn't even have to send in an IRS statement because I hadn't made a, what is the minimum IRS? You have to make $1,600 or something like that in those days. But fortunately, we stayed in a studio which at that time cost me $75 a month rent. The studio in which I live now costs me $11,500 rent a month. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm.